Yes. It's, and, um, mm-hmm. and it, that, that is a whole examination of selflessness, of really doing meditations on... Uh, the, the meditation has to do with um, getting a concrete sense of the, the I, the self. And then once you have that within you, the meditation is, okay, where is it? You start looking for it and you can't find it. Is I the body? Well, there's also mind. Is, am I just the mind? Am I, am I, is, if I point to body, if I point here, am I heart? Or if I point here, am I hand? So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a series of aggregates of various things. And that is, your, your, so what you're saying is exactly the meditation on understanding selflessness, that the more you start looking for that, the more you realize it doesn't exist how you think it exists. And the whole idea is to get to that point where it's a paradox. That's really what it is. From what, from what, I, from what I understand from spiritual practice is that it's, um, the point of spiritual practice is understanding that this phenomenon, which is called a universe that we call it, is a mystery. And that the more we are able to live it with peace with that mystery, the, the more enlightened we become, <laughs> the happier and more peaceful we become. When we try to figure it out, um, and again, make it concrete to conceptualize it, that's when we suffer. So the more we can live with this idea that we, the chair, all of it, um, can exist, but also part, its true nature is empty of a concrete existence, a permanent existence, the more in alignment we come with, with true nature and the more we come in contact with our own true selves. And the point is, is that we need to put those labels on it to delineate it from other things. Yes, in a sense. thank you. And, and the, some of the highest teachings, uh, philosophical teachings, will say that things merely exist because they are labeled. Right. And again, it's this, this idea of it, of it having a function. Right. So like, um, a woman can be woman, and when she has a baby, she becomes mother. Before that, she wasn't mother. So, and she wouldn't have become mother if there wasn't a baby. So there wouldn't have been a South San Francisco if there wasn't a San Francisco. Right? <laughs> right? So it, that's how interdependent is that you, you, you know, South Dakota exists. I know South Dakota exists because I know someone who's been to North Dakota. I know, so I, I'm from New York. I'm a, I'm a coast kind of guy. So I don't know anything about South Dakota, but I know it exists because I know North Dakota exists, and it's called South Dakota. So, so... I'm sorry, I just said that. <laughs> um, so the idea of this is to begin to understand that when we start realizing we're not as concrete as we think we are, that we are uh, uh, a series of causes and conditions by others and by, our, and by our own karma, for instance, when we realize that we're not permanent and not concrete, then we start seeing that we are far more changeable and impermanent and therefore um, uh, open to new experience. That's how I bring this in. And, and that, in the Buddhist tradition, is that is our Buddha potential. That is our Buddha nature. Our Buddha nature is the part of us that is changeable, that is impermanent, that is not concrete. And that is what is comforting about that, is that we are all capable of becoming Buddhas, of reaching our fullest potential as human beings, because of the, the reason we're not concrete. So there is a part of you that, is already, that has, is, has already the seed of being a Buddha. And that is the whole point of Buddhist practice. Since these perceptions are in our minds, you know, that we delineate things, that we label things, that we separate things, that we see ourselves as concrete. Because they're in our minds and created in our minds as a function to limit us in a sense, the only place that we can undo that is in our minds. So that is the point of Buddhist practice. What was so revolutionary about what the Buddha was saying is we, you go within. The path to enlightenment is within. And that we have, that those seeds are already planted within us to be Buddhas. 
there is a part of us that is already Buddha. Because we're not concrete, because we're not permanent, because we're not dependent and, and, and inherent. We don't exist inherently. And that is the true nature. And if you think about it, the, the, the mind, the consciousness of a Buddha is uh, limitless. Limitless. Limitless love, limitless generosity, limitless compassion, limitless power, limitless wisdom. Which is, which is the potential in our own minds, our own consciousness, our own true selves, the true nature of ourselves. And so how we perceive, our, perceive ourselves now is limited. So the Buddhist practice is to find the ways to eliminate the perceptions and those very things that are limiting <coughs> us from opening up to the capacity that we each have, the potential we each have. And uh, fear plays an important role in that. So in a sense, if you look at it from the perspective of emptiness, fear exists. Does anyone here who wanna, would like to discuss and say that fear doesn't exist? And, and it's not concrete like a chair. There are things in your life that you could be fearful of, like dogs. But dog is not fear. They're two separate things. Right? And fear, at least how I understand it, is a mental process. It's not an emotion. It may trigger some very deep emotions. But really, when you separate it out, you, can, you have a fearful object. You have your reaction to it. But in between that is your mental process of the fear. So it's something your mind has created. And you could say you created it by yourself. You could say your parents and your society helped you create it. You could also say if you uh, uh, really practice traditions that go along with this, it could come from past life impressions. So those are where they came from. But a dog, if that's your object of fear, is not the fear itself. You see dog and you have created a mental process of that is something to be afraid of, and you adapt. Does that make sense? So it has a function. Yes? What about, I'm hearing you, but the layer of instinctive fear that's inherent, and it almost seems biological, like when we're about to be hit 